and welcome back to Green Giant Tactical, where today I'll be going over something I've been working on myself. Um, this is not by any means something you could pick up off the shelf, or not even close. Um, I have, as you've probably gathered if you've actually looked at the site, a rather big fondness for gas blowbacks. Uh, hence I'll in the future be doing back gas blowback repairs if you need it. Cambridgeshire is going to be the starting sort of region to do this, but I cover most things. I have plenty of experience with it. I've been playing for five years. Most of that time has been using gas blowbacks. Um, so in front of me, I have a heavily, heavily modified WE M4. This is very um, big, would be the easiest. I can only just fit it in camera shot. There you go. This is predominantly aimed at being used as a DMR, hence the length and the fact that I, well, yeah, a stupid scope on top. Um, so I'll break this down in bits. First off, I'll get rid of the scope because otherwise I'm not going to be able to get this in camera shot. Wow. Probably also remove the silencer. So scope out of the way. What we have is, if I can take it around, one WEM4. This is an open bolt variant, as you can see by me racking the bolt back. Get this to sit. This is quite unwieldy in its current time and moment. Um, so, open bolt, bolt locks back, nozzle decides not to for once. So, push that forward. Uh, flip, sorry, blow the hammer off. Okay, so on the right. The easiest way to do this is going to have to be to split the receivers because this is, it's a bit unwieldy to keep on the camera shot. So, pin pops out. I don't keep the retainer on the rear pin, I'll tape that down because if I need to make a quick change in the field, it is a royal bugger to get them out with the retainer in and it flaps about and all that jazz. So, that's the reason why I don't have the retainer. Um, wouldn't recommend doing that because they have a grand, joyous habit of falling out at the most inopportune moment. Lower receiver splits from top, uh, from upper receiver, and you're left with a gun which won't fire in the middle of a firefight. Not a good move. Um, but I just do it anyway because I'm usually because I'm usually sitting there with my thumb over the thing anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. Um, so we have one lower receiver. Standard WE stock, um, except for changes I've made immediately are I've got a real steel uh, Myad grip on. I don't like having the wraparound loop around the back, which uh, the thumb grip, so I've not bothered with that. And for the stock itself, I managed to acquire uh, one of the last remaining. Uh, Magpul PTS versions of the PRS stock, specifically for gas blowbacks. A um, few parts missing, but who cares? This, this cost me 150 quid instead of having to fork out 400 plus for the real steel version. This 400 plus being realistic, take into account I've got to get a different buffer spring, so I can't just rock it in. I have to get a different uh, buffer extension, so that's the tube. Uh, like on an M4, you have the buffer um, tube itself, they have a very uh, different extension for an M16 length stock like this, uh, which goes the entire length from there to there of the stock and actually contains a spring and buffer itself, which is what the bolt recoils into. Now, we have a extendable rear on the stock, so this is predominant, this is a precision rifle stock, as Magpul call it, hence PRS. Um, this is only a replica, so it's not quite as good, but it's still really, really solid. There are some reports of some idiots in the US using these on AR-15s and 22s without um, any issues. I really do not recommend this because this is an airsoft stock. Do not use that on a real weapon, for the love of God. <laughs> so, on the facing side, if I can ever get this into focus. Yeah, I'm lacking a bit of light in here. I'll work on that in future reviews. Okay, you can see the sling loop there. We've also got one on the rear of the stock behind. There we go. Got sling loop there, one there, 
that wheel adjusts the height of the cheek rest, and that can go a serious way. I've only got it up a bit because I'm only going to a low mount on the um, scope itself. Then a side to side wheel for the uh, changing, adjusting the pull. So compared to a standard M16 length stock, this goes from uh, three quarters of an inch less than the length of an M16 stock to one and three quarter inches longer than an M16 stock. I quite like it because, um, well, I have very long arms and it's incredibly difficult to get comfortable with little stocks, especially when I'm going up against the scope and this just makes my life a lot easier because then I can set it to however I want it. I've actually got it about half an inch longer than an M16 stock for posterity purposes. Um, okay, so um, I wasn't particularly happy with doing it just as an internal STEMI lock because I'm running this at 425 FPS or for when it's needed I'll drop it down to 400 for certain milsims. Um, I will say now that you can semi lock it but it's difficult to keep reliable and as the parts break down it will degrade and auto fire will return. So to counter that problem I've gone for the ugly option. I've got a piece of plastic in epoxy stuck to the body. This prevents me from ever engaging auto. I really have tried to engage auto. I nearly snapped the selector trying to do it. So it can't be done, even with a mallet and a chisel. It's going to prove difficult when I want to remove this and return this back to an auto rifle, but for the moment that doesn't really matter. So I've only got safe and semi. So as for internals of the actual rifle, Start with the inside the buff tube. If I can get this thing to ever go out. Okay, it's not going to play ball. Right, this is more difficult than I anticipated. Right, there we go. Okay, that'll do for the moment. Right, so I have a standard WE recoil spring. I will just say I'm not fond of RA Tech parts. They have a tendency to increase the wear on the rifle. Um, they're not cheap and they don't always work. So why would you buy them when... Um, fine, the trigger boxes for a stock WE are not easy to get hold of, but there are ways of getting hold of them cheaply compared to a full RA Tech kit will cost you a couple of hundred... Uh, well, trigger... Uh, the trigger unit, so uh, trigger, hammer, and so on, will cost you probably 60, 70 quid to replace with RA Tech parts or other custom parts, CWI or a few other companies. Um, WE trigger box, if you know where to get them, I'm not going to reveal that because I need to keep that one under wraps um, for the moment, um, can be got for 40 to 50 dollars. After bringing that into the UK with customs charges and so on, you're probably looking about 60 quid. But that's not just a trigger unit, that's also coming with a bolt, um, a replacement hop unit, which can be extremely useful in the future because you've got a piece of well, a heavy movement against a weak zinc alloy uh, hop unit that is going to break eventually. So it's a good idea to have a spare because they're incredibly difficult to get hold of otherwise. Um, so, got a spring, standard WE spring. This is an M4 spring, so I've had to put lots of spaces in the stock tube to match up. And that is also why instead of a standard WE uh, M4 buffer, I'm using a Garda uh, M16 buffer for a WA gun. This works fine. Do not listen to the people on the forums who say, oh, you can't do that. You can. All it is is a metal rod with a few nod a uh, few rips on it to accept the buffer spring. This works fine and it cycles. The only thing you're going to have a problem with is getting the spaces right in the stock tube because I don't know why, but no two WEs have got the same sort of uh, pull length. It's probably down to manufacturing, but 
No, I don't really care. Um, because mine works. Um, this is a fairly heavy thing. This is probably about twice the weight of the uh, stock WEM4 one. And you can hear it rattling, so it's definitely got weights in it. Um, I haven't investigated this because, frankly, I just wanted to get the thing built. Um, so, if I put those back in for the moment, should be able to wiggle. Okay, more than a bit wiggling. So, all you're doing here is just putting the buffer back in. Spin behind there, put that on there. Normally, I say put in loop while you're doing that just to keep it lubricated so it doesn't uh, seize up or anything, but I've already dunked it and now my hand is absolutely covered in it. So, um, so other than that, you have stock WE parts are generally a mix of mild steel and zinc alloy. It's good for a while, it will break down eventually because it's not the strongest of metals, but these work from the factory. If they work, why fix it? <laughs> right, so put that aside for a moment. Next, we have the upper receiver. This will be a bit more difficult for you to replicate if you want to because of certain rails. Um, so, first off, you have so imagine that's in the gun, you'd pull that up, and this is what you're doing when you this is what's happening when you're. Uh, Char uh, pulling the charging handle back is the bolt is being pulled back and then that hits the buffer spring and recoils forward and that's what creates the blowback when the gas is in obviously. Um, so pull that out, that comes out and that's your bolt group. Um, mine's been a bit, of a, a bit of a pain in the arse today and has decided it's going to stick out so I'll need to relude that later or anyway or before I play. Um, You've also got the charging handle, if you pull right down and then drop down and out. This is crap. I'm going to put it out there. WA, um, KWA, GMP all have decent charging handles. Find a real steel one and mod it, for the love of God. These are awful. The, mo the most common fault you'll find with a WE gun it's not that something internal is broke, the charging handle, which you need to rack the gun and be able to fire it, has snapped and sheared off at about the point where it joins into the receiver. So you've got two nodules either side. You can just faintly see that against my face. On the side, they will shear off around that point because it's not particularly strong. Um, I've actually got a reinforced one in at the moment, so this is not a stock one. Again, I don't have many stock parts in the gun apart from some of the internals. Um, this is manky, by the way, because <laughs> I need to clean it. Um, so, other than that, you've got a solid metal. This is only a die cast receiver. I will later be ordering a forged receiver to replace it. So it has absolutely no markings because they're, unlike certain companies, they don't want to get a bollocking by the manufacturers who own the trademarks. Um, so it's bog standard. Then the rail itself, if I can get this to shoot in a decent light, I bet it's not going to take all. Right, so there we go, it's a bit better. There's a Seekings Precision MCSR V2. This is a real steel rail. WE are good in this respect. They will recept, uh, accept real steel parts. The screw thread on the front of the barrel, where the barrel thread is, uh, will accept real steel rails. And the buffer tube, well, uh, uh, the uh, buffer tube where it screws in will also accept real steel stock tubes and buffer extensions. So it's good in that respect. The rails are also to mill spec. It's basically everything is the same size as it should be and will thus accept real steel parts. So this is a nice solid rail. This cost me £220, so it's quite a bit on the expensive side, but then the upside is where an airsoft, this being 50 inches of rail, um, with a uh, aftermarket 16 inch barrel going down the middle if you're interested. Um, means that despite it being extremely long because it's a real steel one and people are actually using it on real guns it's incredibly light 
it also, if I can get it again, the camera to focus on this one, um, you can see a slight taper as it heads toward the end. So it's actually thicker at the receiver end than it is at the muzzle end, which makes it very nice to grip uh, when you're shooting. Um, so as you can see there, yeah, I've got a much wider grip. So I've got about an inch or so at the receiver end, and I can touch my thumb and finger, middle finger, at the muzzle end. Um, so, other than that, this is a Magpul PTS SPR um, M4 suppressor, quick detach. I am not going to go through the thing, uh, the process of removing it because I've actually got it partially inside the rail because I didn't measure things up properly. Um, because I didn't account for the flash hider uh, encompassing about an inch of the barrel. So it's, it's tedious to get on and off. Um, so now I've dismounted that. Um, this shoots reasonably well. I'll just go while I'm talking. Um, I'll go through the process of reassembling it. Um, you are going to be, if you've never used a gas blowback, this is probably one of the cheaper options for getting into them. Um, obviously not in this build, you'll get a box standard M4 with a mag. That'll cost you around about 290 through to about 350 quid. Um, if you go through um, Ian at Millspec, um, you can get them with an Empass valve pre-installed in the bolt. Empass is basically a negative pressure system which allows you to adjust the amount of gas being uh, given to the projectile and thus changing the FPS. You will need one of those to use these in the UK because the majority of these come out of Asia or come out of manufacturing uh, with an average FPS of between 390 and 450 which you cannot use on an auto gun in the UK, as simple as. If you do turn up to a field with one of these, you'll be told you can't use it. So don't make that mistake. Um, so, I'm just reassembling it. So I've got the two receivers attached. Um, you are going to need to pick up lots of supplies to run a gas blowback. Um, the most important of which is you're going to need very, well, various types of lubrication. Uh, for metal to metal contact, you'll be looking at molybdenum crease, which is a metal powder uh, derivative, uh, which Abbey, the people who do the gases for gas blowback pistols and so on, you will probably have come across them if you've been playing for a while. If not, I'll cover them at a later date. Um, they do. L2, uh, LT2 groups, which is a heavy, thick paste stuff. You need to use that on the bolt and on the inside of the channel with the receiver where the bolt is sliding up and down. Uh, do not use lightweight silicon oil on the gas blowback because it is not for metal to metal contact. Um, and thus, you'll degrade your parts quicker and that can be expensive. Um, other than that, you're going to need a extensive toolkit, an Allen key, a hammer, uh, preferably with a rubber tip, a punch, and a barrel wrench. So if I just go off camera shot. Uh, need one of these. This comes with various tools on it for various actions. This is only a basic one, so it doesn't have everything you'll need, um, but this was enough to get the rail off the front. So on the inside, oh, once again, light. Uh, okay. Basically, you've got a set of grooves on the inside which match up with the um, barrel nuts that you'd have on a standard M4A1 with a uh, plastic handguard. This allows you to rotate off the thing and replace uh, whatever, with whatever barrel nut comes with your rail. You're going to have problems with airsoft rails for WE because the nuts do not match because depth is different because this has a mil spec whereas airsoft is usually done to depend on the rail to either a GNP spec 
which is slightly shallower, it will work, you can force it on, wouldn't advise it. Um, so that, that's a simple fact, you, you, WEs do not match up with many rails. Um, you're also going to be looking at lots of expense on gas, batteries cost what, 12, 13 quid. For the same amount of players you're getting of a battery, you're probably going to go through half a can of gas. You're buying airsoft gas, that's going to cost you about um, five, six quid in gas a day. Um, if you're using propane, which I'll cover again, I'll cover all of this stuff related to gas blowbacks in a later day. Um, if you're using propane, you're looking at about a quid of propane. This is standard camping propane that you'd use to fuel your cooker. A lot of sites do not allow it. Um, this is due to their insurance not allowing it, so don't try and argue unless they have contacted you and said you can talk to them about it. It ain't going to happen. Um, so, other than that, uh, we have obviously the scope. This is verging on being a ridiculously long video. It's going to take forever to upload. Um, so, scope. This is a replica. This is not a real one. To get the real one of this, I'd have to probably sell my computers, um, which is not really an option. Um, you have a three and a half to ten times magnification on a 40 millimeter aperture. So that means that the scope on that end is 40 millimeters in diameter, or roughly 40 millimeters in diameter, and that, well, yeah, magnification is three and a half to ten times what you see at the reticle. Um, realistically, in airsoft, you rarely go above four. If you need to go above four, there's something seriously, seriously wrong, um, because you're not going to match the distances. These things, the real things, shoot out to a couple of thousand yards practically the scope if you need. I'm not saying they will and for airsoft there's no way in hell. Um, I've got a LaRue Tactical SPRS mount on it or rather an SPR 1.5 always get that one wrong um, which has quick attach. This is again this is only a replica uh, it's usually made by Elements or FMA or something like that. Like various manufacturers make them various qualities. For airsoft, you don't really need anything else. Real things are ridiculously priced for us anyway. Uh, then a set of uh, sunshades on this. The outer one is just an extension sunshade. Just take that off. Um, when you're paying for a lot, uh, a lot for an optic, so that's a straight see-through sunshade. Take that off, take the next one off, if I can get perks on it. When you're buying this scope on its own, it's about 100 quid. Um, you don't want to get that shot out. If you don't protect the lens, it will get shot out. And for that purpose, then I've got the honeycomb one. You can just about see if I flip around. That's got about half an inch of honeycomb match. Its main purpose in the real world is to stop the scope reflecting. The holes are conveniently sized that also stop BBs, and that's crucial if you're using a scope like this. Um, so I'll put those back on. Um, other than that, on this particular model, you have um, uh, sorry, elevation and windage. So that's with fine adjustment tuning inside, you can remove the cap and do more severe adjustments. And then you also have a range adjustment, which for all intents and purposes, I don't think actually works. Um, then you have an adjustment wheel on the main pipe, which goes through the various magnifications. Uh, again, I rarely use it about three and a half, so there's little to no point. Then a minute focus thing on the end with the main lens, which allows you to adjust it, micro adjust it. Then on this particular model, you have illumination. Again, I don't see the point. Uh, okay, can I get it to... Okay. Okay, I think second. 
There we go. So you can just about see the crosshair inside there. Um, it's okay. It's, it's, it's cheap scope. I wasn't expecting it to be great. Um, it puts too much illumination on, or too little, and there's no sort of in-between, well, no real in-between. It's either stepped up and too little increments or too greater increments. It's not really worth the hassle, but you don't need the illumination, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so, um, I suppose I should go over the mags. I'll go off camera again, because I need to go find one, because I don't keep the mags with the gun. Um, for safety purposes. Um, right. Back on camera. Here's the mag. You have a 30 round gas mag, which the gas will last probably one, one and a half to two full charges of BBs, if you're lucky. These things leak like bastards. I'm not going to sugarcoat that one. Um, simple as get these, they're cheap, they're the only things that work with them anyway. Um, but that does have the caveat of them being weak as hell. Um, and they don't do it the nice way either. On WE mags, the gas, the chambers themselves, are locked down by a plate all the way along the back of the mag. That is where it will leak first. Then it will leak with the valve, and then it, with the uh, uh, output valve, because the hammer, when you fire it, um, hits that, releases a small charge of gas, which pushes the bolt back and then back again, and so on and so forth. Then the fill valve will leak. Do you get all combination within three? And it's within a week of actually getting the mag, and you've not put much gas through it, send it back because it will be almost impossible to fix it. It can be done, it takes a lot of time. I can do it, I will charge to do it if you want it done because it is time consuming. Um, other than that, on the top you've got a small lever, if I can get some light, and that little switch there, when you push that forward, you've got the switch there. Push that forward, that brings up a notch. This allows you to change between having it so that when the bolt slides over it and the BB channels is empty, it will lock the bolt back. You have it back down again. Okay, so it's ever going to behave and that should slide back again. These are quite fiddly, which is probably a good thing because it means the bolt isn't going to knock it out of place when it's in. Okay, so that slides back down. Top is level and there's nothing in the way. That means it's just going to, as soon as it's out of BBs, it's going to continue cycling. So you have to know when the pitch is different so that it's out of BBs, which is fairly obvious if you can count to 30. So I don't see what the issue is. Um, other than that, I think that is about it. So I'll finish at that at a whole half an hour of video. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. And I'll be back again soon. Goodbye.